Hi, this is Aaron Dablo, and I'm going to cover how to make an HDR probe uh, by using uh, Photoshop, a uh, freeware program called PictureNot, and how to bring them into 3D Studio Max as a uh, HDR reflection environment uh, for your 3D scenes. Uh, to start off with, I'm going to cover the uh, bits of hardware, the things that you'll actually need to shoot one of these. First off, you're going to need a camera. A DSLR um, will be a good bet. Uh, anything that you can use to control the exposure. Um, what I used for these was a Nikon D90, and it worked great. Uh, let me easily control the uh, control the exposures, and that's mostly what you need. Number two, you're going to need a probe. Now, this is your reflection environment, a, a chrome ball. You can get one of these uh, at a home and garden supply store. It's a, called a gazing ball. They put them in uh, in their gardens for aesthetic purposes, but we're going to use it for something else completely different. It's important to get one that's as uh, mirror-like as possible. Some of them have uh, designs, patterns, or colors on them. Some of them even have like little uh, ridges from manufacturers, so if you get one of those, you'll need to make sure that you align it so that you see as little of that as possible. And the third thing, and this is just as, if not more important than the other pieces, is a tripod. Um, I've tried shooting these without tripods. It is almost impossible to get a good result in the end. Um, it is really, really important. You might think, oh, I won't need one. I'll just take the photos. I can't tell you enough how important it is to have a tripod. Uh, I have a little small one, a four inch one that I, is nice and robust that I can use to put the camera on and pick the probes with. Um, and it's uh, really, really, really important to have a tripod. So now that you've got these things, I'll tell you what you need to do uh, in order to get the best photographs for your HDR probe. Uh, first thing, uh, you'll want to get your probe, set it on a, on a surface that's sturdy that it won't that it won't move. I oftentimes use like a like a, a cap from like a soda or uh, maybe wedge a couple rocks or something like that underneath. Um, and just whatever you need, whatever you put it on, just make sure that the probe is not going to move. Uh, number two, uh, you set your tripod, uh, you set your camera on your tripod, you zoom it in as far as you can so you can be as far away from the probe as possible. The uh, longer lens, the farther away you can be, the better, because your size in the reflection of the probe will be smaller. You'll have to do less paint out, and you'll get more uh, nice detail in there. And uh, third uh, consideration is if uh, your uh, camera or the probe moves at all, you'd want to start over and shoot your mo shoot uh, shoot your exposures all over again. Uh, if the if it gets bumped, if uh, somebody walks by, if there's something you know moves in the reflection, or if it ends up taking longer than you'd expect expected, if it takes more than just a you know 30 seconds to shoot all of your exposures, the clouds can actually move a noticeable amount and sort of wreck your uh, wreck the clarity of and detail of that part of your image. So. If it's taking too long, if it, don't hesitate to start over. It's digital, it's cheap, you can do it as many times as you need. It's important to just get your exposures as clean and aligned and perfect as you can. So you have so your probe you set up, your, uh, and your camera, camera and your HDR probe set as far away as possible and zoomed in. You're going to want to uh, uh, shoot multiple exposures with your camera. Uh, on the Nikon, you uh, press the plus and minus, and then you scroll the uh, the uh, wheel on the side, and you can shoot. Uh, it, there'll be the exposure compensation. You'll see like plus two, plus four, whatever plus decimals. I like to shoot them at uh, at increments of two. So if it if there's detail, I'll shoot it at plus six, plus four, plus two, zero, minus two, minus four, minus six. I don't always end up using all of them. Uh, but it's good to have a good spread. If you have more of them, there's just not enough contrast between all of the shots to really make a difference. So now that you have all of your images, uh, I'm going to show you how to assemble them into an HDR probe in Photoshop first, and then we're going to use PictureNot, which is a freeware uh, bit of software in case you don't have Photoshop, and then you could use like GIMP or something else. But for the purposes of this, I'm going to be using Photoshop. Then I'll go over cleaning up, and then we'll bring it into 3D Studio Max. All right, let's get started.
So the first uh, method I'm going to show you here is through Photoshop, and it, this is about as easy as it gets. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and go to File, and then here you have Automate, Merge to HDR Pro. Selecting this, you'll be uh, prompted with this window to choose your choose your files. I'm going to browse to this location, and here I have a bunch of NEFs. Slide this up. This is the raw format from the Nikon that I was talking about, and you can see I have the multiple different exposures down there. So I'm going to go ahead and grab these, and it's going to attempt to automatically align source images. Now, even though we did shoot this on a tripod, very, very careful, there will still end up being a little bit of drift. There is no getting around this. Uh, no matter how careful you are, things are going to slide. All right, so let's uh, we'll, we'll tell Photoshop to take care of that, and here's our files. And now this is going to run through a few steps of things, um, and uh, I may be cutting the video in and out here so that you don't have to uh, wait for it. But as you can see now, Photoshop is loading in all of the different exposures. Once it's got them, it's going to uh, start to align them. Okay, and now that it's aligned them, it's prompted us with this little window here. And we can't quite fit all of it but you can see here that you have our different exposures down here at the bottom and we have our histogram so uh, if you you know adjust your histogram you can see that it's sort of roughly put things together a little bit and we'll set this here where we want our contrast and you'll see that we have all of this extra stuff out in the background and you'll get funny things like this where a person might have been moving or a tree or bush or something that's not going to be important because we're going to be cropping that stuff out and I have it set to 32-bit mode because we are going to want not just float, but we're going to want 32-bit float, which gives us values that are above one. This is what gets. This is the real power of the HDR probe is that it gets you these overbright uh, areas where you get the detail. Like here, you can see that we're starting to get some of this little cloud detail and stuff back in there. So I'm going to click OK, and it's going to start to run. All right, now that it's finished. You can see here that because this is a 32-bit image, we'll have our exposure control enabled. And you can actually dial through and see that here in our brights, we have uh, detail under here. And if we go down into our darks here, you can see that we have detail in our clouds. Go ahead and put this back. So I'm going to show you how I go ahead and crop these. Uh, I'm going to grab uh, the top ruler here, pull this down in just a little bit past the edge of the sphere, maybe even maybe just a little bit more here and I'll do this on two sides next I'll grab the uh, marquee tool here set to circle holding down shift I'll drag a circle in here and then I'm gonna go to image crop what this does is it'll just get rid of everything around there it's a pretty simple thing just to obscure and hide this stuff out here and uh, do a selection and I'm going to expand it and I already know that 20 pixels is a good value for this because of the resolution of these images so I'm going to expand it and if you watch closely you'll see that the marquee will be expanding there we go uh, that's another benefit of having trimmed in a little bit I'm going to make a new layer now because this is a 32-bit float image you can't use the paint bucket tool so just a little work around here we're going to just make a make a black rectangle and then we're going to go ahead and rasterize that and then with our selection on this layer, I'll go ahead and delete. And here we have our uh, HDR probe uh, already set up. Now we're going to go ahead and do a little bit of paint out and a little bit of cleanup, but uh, next I'm going to jump to PictureNot to show you how that workflow works. All right, so now I'm going to show you how to use PictureNot to uh, create an HDR probe. Now I'm still going to start with my source files here in Photoshop, but if you don't have Photoshop and you want to use some freeware, you can use uh, software like GIMP that will let you do the same thing. All right, so for starters, we have our images here, and you can see that I've already brought them in at their different exposure levels, and it's very, very important to check and align. Now, uh, PictureNot and the Photoshop method that I already show can auto-align stuff, but sometimes you might have things that are too screwed up or you might want to clean them up. So I'll just show you how I do this already. Uh, I'll just drop this layer down. Uh, I'll usually uh, keep my, my base zero layer as the main reference one, and you can see now that we've gotten a little blurry here. We're, uh, we're a little offset, and you can kind of see on these highlights here that things aren't quite in the right spot. So what I'll go ahead and do is I'll just align them back to where they're supposed to be and put them up back to 100%. So here I have all of my different exposures that I've already aligned up. 
Now, uh, we'll do the same cropping method that we did in the other one, which I already have here, with all of our layers lined up. And we're going to want to save out all of these different exposures. So I'm going to go ahead and use a TIFF format. Let's go ahead and get some TIFFs. Uh, turn off layers. And here you can see I already have all of these saved out. Uh, right now, we're just saving out the base exposure. So just do this. Make sure you've turned layers off, uh, because otherwise it's going to save a bunch of stuff that you don't need. And yes, I'll go ahead and replace this. You would have another option here if you didn't already do it, but everything else should be fine. And now you can see that I have these files right here, which are all of my exposures. Next, jumping in into Picture Knot, I can go ahead and click this button. It will generate HDR from uh, exposures. You'll be prompted with this. I'm just going to click and drag these in here. You can also do the Add button, but I uh, don't need that. And here you go, you can see that uh, we have our bias uh, right here. And fortunately, since we saved them with all of the different exposures, I'll just go through here and type them out to give Picture Knot a good idea of what it's dealing with. Now, this has automatic image alignment and ghost removal and color balancing, but uh, we've already taken care of the alignment, and fortunately enough, our colors aren't messed up because we took the, all the pictures uh, quickly enough, uh, so I don't need to do this. Uh, now, it's not just Picture Knot that I want to avoid doing this in, uh, Photoshop as well, if you don't have to. I'm going to go ahead here and tell it to read them. It's going to give you a little dialogue here of what's going on, and next it'll have saved the 32 bit or created the 32-bit image and same deal here as in Photoshop you can adjust your exposure control and then you have it so I'm gonna go ahead and save this out uh, this and the thing that was created in uh, Photoshop are equivalent uh, it's just a different method to go about doing the exact same thing and here we go next for the final step of creating this image I'm gonna bring it back into Photoshop and we're gonna do a little bit of touch-up Alright, so here we are back in Photoshop. I'm gone ahead and decided to use the one that we created in Photoshop, although the one we made in PictureNot would be just as equivalent. Uh, we've got the uh, vignette shape around the outside here. And the last thing that we're going to need to do in here before we can use this in 3D is actually clean it up a little bit. We're going to want to go ahead and remove the person because this would otherwise end up being in your reflection. Now, uh, I'm using the clone stamp tool. You can do copying, pasting, whatever you want to do. Uh, however, you can't use healing brushes or some of the other tools that, that only work on uh, other bit uh, on lower bit depth images. Now, you can copy and paste. I'm just going to do this really quickly here, but you can see that uh, not a big deal. We'll just get rid of them. And this is where uh, shooting it from as far away as possible is the best idea because you don't want somebody taking up the the majority of your screen. All right, now that this is all cleaned up, I'm going to collapse it down. Now our layers are all merged. I'm going to save this as HDR probe. Let's we'll call this HDR01. Great. Now we'll bring it into Max, have it be a reflection environment for our scene. Okay, so here we are in Max, and I've got just a simple basic scene here set up so uh, I can show you how to import and properly use the probe that we've made. Uh, I've just got a teapot here, and uh, if I check my material, a, a V-Ray material that is reflective, and I have a map in there that is a fall-off ramp, so you can see that we get uh, less and more reflection uh, on the edges. All right, so opening up our render setup here on the uh, V-Ray tab, we're going to go down uh, to the environment, and we're going to give the 3DS Max scene a reflection environment. Now you can do this through the material itself uh, in its own map. This will override the scene, but uh, just to show you here, uh, I'm going to do it in the environment map. This is the one that I would recommend using because it will affect all of your materials. So here we are. I'll grab my map, and there's a uh, V-Ray HDRI right here. I'll just instance this back into our material editor, and now we can go ahead and edit it. Right now there's no map loaded in, so I'm just going to browse. Here we are, this is the one we just made, and you can see that it's loaded it in there. Go ahead and close this, and do a render, and you'll see that right off the bat that we've got our uh, image rendering. However, it's looking a little weird, especially here in, the, here in the middle. That's because the rotation and the mapping type are off. The way that we set this up, we're going to want to go ahead and use mirrored ball. So if I go here and render it again, see that it's changed the mapping type and now you see that there's a little bit of pinching here in the middle 
This is because we're actually looking at the probe from the wrong direction. Now, it uh, will matter uh, depending on the, the angle of your camera. Um, right now I'm looking through, or roughly from, the front viewport into my scene. So I already know that my horizontal rotation, I will want to rotate 180 degrees. That tells uh, V-Ray to essentially rotate the reflection environment 180 degrees. And if I go ahead and render it, we go ahead and here you can even tell the area that we painted out. This is familiar with what we were looking at. Now it's looking very drab and dull, and that's because there's not enough output on our image here to really utilize the strength of the HDR probe. Remember, the HDR has uh, contrast and lighting detail that is greater than 0 to 255 or even 0 to 1. Our monitors are, and regular image viewers are like set up to process. So here I'm going to go ahead and crank up this uh, overall multiplier to a value of 4. You can see it gets a little bit brighter in here. And when I render, you can see that we're getting nice bright highlights here and it's falling off to a pretty low value right in here. Uh, you can adjust your gamma for additional controls, but as you can see this looks pretty close to the uh, thing that we set up to begin with and tweaking with your maps here you can see that you'll get uh, you know a lot of nice a lot of nice values on your HDR probe. All right, that's it for this tutorial. I'm Aaron Dablo. Thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed the tutorial.